the figure eight coil, the best coil that you can coil up your rope with. I'm going to show you the uh, difference between the traditional uh, going around in one coil type of method. For instance, I'll give you an example. I'll make little coils here. This is the way people coil up rope normally. Not this small, but I'm trying to make an example. And what you end up with is a bunch of kinks and twists. See the twists in the rope? Watch, I'll just do four. See that? Then it. Now, if you do a figure eight, you won't get any twists or kinks. And I'll, I'll show you an example. I'll make some small little figure eights here to show you how this comes out clean. No twists, no kinks whatsoever. It's nice and free and loose, the way the rope should be. <clears throat> it's nice and relaxed. So um, what you do is you start out holding it like this and let the end hang down slightly longer than the length that your coils are going to be. Now what I use is my arm as a gauge for gauging the distance so that the coils are uniform. So I'll hold this right here against my side and I'll bring this arm all the way out. And what you want to do is you just hold on to it normally like this. Don't put any twists in the rope. Don't don't change the uh, the rope on its axis from this perspective. Just keep it keep the rope flat, so to speak. And you come in and you go past your hand. Don't come in and lay it against your hand like that. But what you do is you just come in. You come in like this and just go past your hand like that, and lay the rope in like that. And they're generally the same length because I'm using this, my arm is a gauge. So I'll have it end up uniform like that. And they're all laying in eights. And the thing about an eight is an eight is a clockwise and a counterclockwise turn in the rope. So when you have a clockwise and a counterclockwise turn, what you end up with is a cancellation because the clockwise is going to the right and counterclockwise is going to the left. So it ends up canceling it out. And don't worry if all the figure eights don't come out exactly perfect. Some of, sometimes you'll get one that sort of tries to do an eight and it doesn't quite, but you're generally taking the kink out of the rope. Now the final coil up, I like to leave a lot of rope, a lot. This is like eight feet of rope. This is about, uh, 75 feet of half inch braid on braid. This is uh, Samson stable braid. It's an old, it used to be brighter blue when it was new. So you go around the center of your rope there. I like to give it at least four wraps. And the thing that I'm particular about is I like to make them nice and tight. The tighter they are, the better. And there's a reason for that, and I'll show you. Nice and snug. And here's a trick. Keep your hand in the head all the, the whole time. This keeps it organized. And leave yourself some room so your hand can move around in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and grab it. Grab my the bitter end. Pull it through. And notice as I'm pulling it through, I, I switch hands. This hand right here is holding the side, I'm holding it and not letting myself lose any of the tension that I got in there. So I'm not letting any slack. And then this goes right over the head. Some people call that a king's head. And then I'm keeping the tension on here. I keep this tight, go around and yank it like that. Just the, just the um, lark's head on there, or king's head, whatever you want to call it holds it really snug and the tight wraps is essential because now you can do this with it. You can throw it around, you can toss it around in your truck, in your car, and even the ends get all messed up, but it'll still be uniform. It'll still be all one unit.
ready for deployment, rapid deployment in the case of an emergency, right? You want your rope so that when you need to go use it, it doesn't come apart on you and you end up with a knotted, tangled mess. And I'll show you why this is, how to undo this, how to deploy it. I put my hand in so it comes out where the rope is coming out. And what I do is I feed this through, pull some of the slack on the bite. I got the bite all pulled out with some slack on it, pull it over, put my hand back through. Now I let the bite fall in the back here. Pull that out like that. Let the rope unravel. Now if you notice, come in closer. If you notice, the rope is coming off one side of this coil because I coiled it starting here and I stacked the rope till I terminated on this side. The other side terminates over here. So what I can do if I want to deploy this rope rapidly is I can just lay it down like this and it's sort of already pre-flaked. And that's what I'm gonna show you next is how to flake a rope. 